Hello, I'm Matthew, and I'm an interpreter. Well, I'm not interpreting at the moment, obviously, so I don't know why I've got these on, I'll take them off. So, I'm going to talk to you today about the words that an interpreter most dreads hearing. What do you think they might be? Now, here's my PowerPoint presentation on the sterilisation of female fruit flies, which unfortunately I didn't have time to give to the interpreters in advance. That may send a chill down the spine of the interpreters. Or, I don't have much time left, so I'm going to speak extra fast. Also words that an interpreter doesn't relish hearing. But I think if you ask a lot of interpreters, they would say that the words they most dread hearing are, I'm going to tell you a joke. Why might that be? Well, I think, firstly, because jokes often involve puns, a play on words which only works in one language. They can also involve cultural assumptions or references. And sometimes they simply involve a sense of humour which doesn't travel. Uh, it doesn't work in another language. So. Sometimes it's literally untranslatable, and sometimes even though you think you've more or less managed to translate it, it's just not funny for your audience, which puts the interpreter in a very uncomfortable position. So I think when that happens, we need to go back to first principles of interpreting and remember that we're not only thinking about what, what the speaker is saying, but also why. So why do people tell jokes? Obviously, to make other people laugh. Why do they want to make other people laugh? That's a more complicated uh, question. It could be to break the ice at a meeting. That's very common in some cultures, particularly in the UK and the US. It could be to establish a bond with the audience on the basis of something that you have in common, common perspective or cultural or linguistic background. It could be to demystify a topic in a very formal situation, making a joke about something can help you to get closer to the ideas and not be put off. Uh, or it should, could be to show the absurdity of a situation too. If a group of people who've been united in laughing at something uh, become much stronger and that something also loses uh, strength. Satire is a very powerful political weapon. So there's a whole series of reasons why people might be trying uh, to make other people laugh, but basically for the interpreter, when you hear the words, I'm going to tell a joke, you feel afraid. You feel afraid of failure because you see yourself in a few minutes time having promised something that you've failed to deliver. You tell a joke and nobody laughs. It's like when you have to say the three species of fish are three in number, as I said. You've failed. You've let your audience down. You haven't delivered what you promised. So I think that the first thing we should do is ask a professional comedian, somebody who actually makes a living from trying to make people laugh, why they do it. Hello, I'm Matthew and I'm a stand-up comedian. Not a very good one, obviously, uh, otherwise I wouldn't have to uh, work as an interpreter as well. And I wouldn't be standing here filming this, I'd be filming a panel show for television about things I hated about the 1980s. But uh, I do do it from time to time. And uh, you've asked me whether I've ever told a joke which nobody laughed at. Well, yes, qu quite often, especially since I'm not a very good stand-up comedian. And the technical term for this is dying on your ass. And what do I do when this happens? Well, I think... One definition of comedy is that it's ridiculous people who are taking themselves seriously, who don't realise why they're funny. So I suppose it is possible for a stand-up comedian to be unfunny in a way which is funny because he or she is taking him or herself too seriously. Um, as I say, no, I don't really know much about this. But what I would do in that situation if I'm on stage and people don't laugh? Make a joke out of that situation. Uh, so if I'm in London, I might say... They love that joke in Basingstoke. What's the matter with you people? Come on, it's good. Come on, it's good. So, what advice can we give to interpreters called upon to interpret jokes? The first thing I would say, I think, is don't panic. Uh, the second thing, don't laugh on mic and then not translate what you've just heard, because that will just make your customer jealous. It's like being left out of the party. Uh, and don't start telling a joke until you know if you can end it, because people haven't paid for an interpreter to tell them one long joke with no punchline. If that's what they want, they'll buy tickets to a Michael McIntyre show. Well, no, Michael McIntyre is a very talented and a very rich uh, man. No. Uh, what do you do to go about interpreting jokes, then? A couple of options. Do what the professional stand-up comedian does and make a joke out of the situation. So the speaker has made a joke which the interpreter can assure you is hilarious in the original Lithuanian. That might, if you're lucky, get a laugh. It will certainly break the ice and it establishes a direct 
link uh, between you and the customer, which could be the intention of the speaker. Uh, and another option is to go back to the first principles that I was describing and accept that we can't do justice to the substance, so we need to go back to the speaker's intention. If it's breaking the ice, the, the first solution may work. If it's changing a perspective, establishing a bond, demystifying or showing the absurdity of the situation, if all else fails, we may just have to explain that. So we can take the time of listening to the joke to try to work out what the point of the joke is, not why it's funny, but why it's being told, how it relates to the meeting, and then give some kind of quick explanation, such as the speaker makes a joke comparing the commission proposal and a leaky boat or the speaker makes a joke demonstrating how we are all facing the same problem. Uh, you feel like it's a bit of a cop-out, but at least uh, you, you survive and uh, live to fight another day. Well, that was a load of rubbish. Thought we'd hired an interpreter, not a flipping comedian. Stick to the day job, mate! <laughs>